Hi everyone and welcome to video number 16 on USA conflict 1954 to 1975 and this one ladies and gentlemen it's all about the northern states Martin Luther King and the northern states I'll explain why in a bit more detail soon previous video we were looking at the riots that occurred in the mid 1960s in the northern cities New York Chicago Newark etc after the riots Martin Luther King probably the most important civil rights activist in America at the time he wanted to understand what was going on as Marvin Gaye sang in 1971 what's going on what's going on tremendous song look it up ladies and gentlemen so Martin Luther King visited Watts the district of Los Angeles to try to uncover what was happening he wanted to focus on the north and he wanted to show people that his non-violent methods could succeed in the north but it soon became aware to him that he wasn't winning over the black young urban males they didn't really take to this message so this video what we're going to be studying then is king in the north sounds like an episode of game of thrones <laughs> sorry let's be sensible first thing martin luther king did when he visited watts and came away and he'd realized that a lot of people weren't agreeing with him he rethought his ideas what was this freedom that he was fighting for he was struggling for all his life his very famous I have a dream speech he finishes it with free at last free at last thank God we are free at last or well, what was the freedom before the northern riots to Martin Luther King he was struggling for blacks to register to vote he wanted to remove segregation move discrimination mainly in the southern states after the riots in the north there is a change in King's approach he realizes what he's got to address what he's got to try to win is economic freedom he needed to address the wealth inequality try to remove poverty the terrible slum conditions in many of the ghettos in the northern cities so that is what he decided to concentrate on after the northern riots first thing he visits and goes to Chicago here it is right up here in the state of Illinois Chicago later in the year it was to have huge riots when he went to Chicago he found a city of about four million people one million of whom were black but they all lived in certain confined almost segregated areas with terrible housing so King and the SCLC the Southern Christian Leadership Group remember started a campaign in Chicago aimed at fairer housing as usual he uses his non-violent tactics marches rallies demonstrations speeches and he did get some support particularly from the church communities but however many young blacks in chicago and many black politicians in chicago did not support martin luther king and his approach they're looking a different way remember the fist of black power they are looking for more extreme more radical solutions quicker solutions to their problems but King sets up something called the Chicago Freedom Movement and its aim is to fight segregated housing and unfair rates and rents the SCLC is involved a man called Jesse Jackson later to go on to have a huge career in American politics and he sets up Operation Bread Basket and its aim was to put pressure on white businesses to actually employ black people give more jobs to black people so that's what King did he goes to Chicago and he's trying to campaign on housing fairer housing 
How did his campaign go? Well, not too well, is the answer. He did not have that much success for a variety of reasons. And I'll hopefully go through them now for you. First reason. You've seen me wear this hat before. You may well have heard me mention or remember a police chief called Bull Connor down in the southern states. What the civil rights struggle and the activists tried to do down in the south when they marched, they wanted to provoke a violent reaction from the police because that then gave them good publicity. King thought he could use exactly the same tactic up in the northern states and particularly in Chicago. But it did not work in Chicago, ladies and gentlemen, because the Chicago mayor, a man called Richard Daly, he met Martin Luther King. He appeared to be very, very reasonable. Oh, yes, I hear your complaints. I hear your criticisms. Let's talk. Let's work together. Let's get this thing done. He's not reacting violently. So there's no publicity for Martin Luther King to get there. Daly was quite clever. He met them, he seemed reasonable, seemed supportive, but yet he did nothing. There were no actions. So in a way, Martin Luther King had been outmaneuvered by Mayor Richard Daly. King then went ahead with marches through white areas. Remember, they're trying to break this idea of a black area and a white area for housing. So the black people are marching through the white areas. But there was violence. Riots broke out. Martin Luther King was hit by a brick himself. So there is violence here, but there's still no good publicity for the civil rights activists. Because this time it was different. This time they said, look, Martin Luther King, you cannot stop the violence. You cannot stop the actions of the new black power groups. You are losing control. So they're tending to blame King for the violence. Many people saw Martin Luther King as a threat. They saw him as a trouble causer. For some people, economic equality was too extreme an idea, particularly for many whites in Chicago. It was OK maybe when the whites supported Martin Luther King. So imagine you're a white person in Chicago. Yes, you can support King when he's down here trying to get blacks a, a fairer life because it's not going to impact on you. But if you're here in Chicago, a white person in a white area and Martin Luther King is saying, right, we need black people to move into this area. Many white people got afraid, particularly because of the riots. Many white people were afraid of the black power and many white people feared if blacks moved into their area, the value of their houses would go down. They would lose the Yankee dollar, ladies and gentlemen. Greed is playing a part here. So that's another reason why the campaign in Chicago was not going well. Some people accused Martin Luther King of being a communist. Now, Martin Luther King was never a communist. However, in the 1960s, the Cold War was going on. America, capitalist, democracy, versus the USSR, communist. And USSR and communism were the enemy of America's. So therefore, if someone says, oh, Martin Luther King is a communist, that would not be good for him. It was the ultimate insult in the time of the Cold War. So here we have another problem for Martin Luther King, the communist, as he was labelled, even though he wasn't. Also, remember I said Mayor Daly, once the violence has broken out, he criticises Martin Luther King. He blames Martin Luther King. The Chicago Daily Tribune the newspaper in Chicago said that Martin Luther King was a paid professional agitator, an agitator, 
another word for troublemaker. So when Martin Luther King then starts supporting the anti-Vietnam War movement, more coming on that in later videos, that's another reason why people would withdraw their support from Martin Luther King, particularly President Johnson. So he's losing the support of the president. If you put all of those factors together, we see that the campaign in Chicago was not a success. There were some minor successes. There were some mortgages made more available for some black people. Daly said he would support them. So it's written down on record, I'm supporting you. Of course, he actually didn't. The fact there was federal money of $4 million to try to improve black housing, probably not enough, but at least there was some money. Remember, I mentioned Jesse Jackson, uh, come on, Jesse Jackson and Operation Breadbasket. There was some success there. Some blacks did get more employment. But on the whole, King in the North, episode from Game of Thrones, King in the North, in 1966, the campaign was largely a failure. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the final part of the video. And it's a sad part because it deals with the death, the assassination of Martin Luther King. After his failure in the North, he returns to the South. He's back down in the South with the SCLC, Southern Christian. And he's planning this time a poor people's campaign, not just poor black people, anyone who was poor. And he wanted to sort of try and campaign on that to try to bring the two groups together, whites and blacks. April 1968, Martin Luther King finds himself in Memphis down in Tennessee, the state of Tennessee, just there, ladies and gentlemen. So he's back down in the south, Memphis, Tennessee. Why was he there? He wanted to support black refuse collectors, the men who collected the rubbish off the streets. They were on strike because they wanted to get the same conditions as the white refuse collectors. Notice here, he's back to economic struggles, economic freedoms. Okay, that's what he's doing down in the South. It shows the importance to Martin Luther King of economic freedom. 3rd of April, 1968, Martin Luther King makes one of his great speeches, probably second only to his famous I Have a Dream speech. It was called the Mountain Top speech. And there's a, a phrase in it which says, we as a people, will get to the promised land. We as a people, the black people, we will get there. We will achieve it. But there were lines in that speech, ladies and gentlemen, which suggested that King realized maybe he wouldn't get there. 3rd of April, 1968. 4th of April, 1968, Martin Luther King was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee, shot on a hotel balcony. As U2 sang in 1984, early morning, April 4, shots ring out in a Memphis sky. Free at last, they took your life. They could not take your pride in the name of love. Have a look at it. Notice they sang free at last in the song. That was Martin Luther King's great speech, free at last, his important phrase. 4th of April, he was shot by a man called James Earl Ray. Martin Luther King assassinated. The 1960s, ladies and gentlemen, many, many people, famous people were assassinated in America. President John F. Kennedy, November 63. Malcolm X, 1965. Martin Luther King, April 1968. John F. Kennedy's brother, Robert Kennedy, assassinated two months after Martin Luther King, 68. Assassinations of important people in America shows what American society was like at that time. So King was killed on the 4th of April. 9th of April, his funeral. 
over 100,000 people followed the coffin from the church to the cemetery. Well, what was the impact of King's death? Well, in the short term, in a huge irony for a man who'd used non-violence all of his life, violence occurred. Riots in over 150 cities, over 40 dead, over 3,000 injured, many of whom were severely injured, over 20,000 arrested, millions and millions and millions of dollars of damage were caused. What would Martin Luther King have thought about that, ladies and gentlemen? He lived his whole life trying to use non-violence. And in the week after his death, violence broke out all across America. So that's the short term impact. What about the longer term impact of King's death? Well, the poor people's campaign that he had been planning, that did go ahead. March to Washington. They camped in Washington a couple of weeks. It was terrible weather. And then the camp broke up and everyone went home. Poor people's campaign, a failure. That year, the Civil Rights Act 1968 was passed and some measures were put in to get fairer housing, fairer rents. Federal protection was promised for civil rights activists. So you could argue there, he has gained something, he has won something there, some success after his death. In the Civil Rights Act though, very severe punishment for rioters. What happened to the civil rights groups after his death? Well, many of them lost members, especially white members. Why do you think that might be? Well, of course, King was gone. He was the leader, the figurehead. He was quite a moderate person, non-violence. Many of the white people in America thought, well, the civil rights struggle is won. We've had all of these laws, the Civil Rights Act, Voting Rights Act, Second Civil Rights Act of 68, it's over. You've got what you wanted. We've got equality. So they thought, no need. Other white people, of course, left because of fear. They were afraid. King was gone and he was moderate. He was non-violent. Many of the blacks who remained in civil rights were far more radical, far more extreme, far more militant. As an example of that, the group SNCC, if you remember, SNCC, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, they changed the N from nonviolent to national. So they're removing this idea of not using violence. They're becoming more militant. They said, well, look, King used nonviolence. And where did that get him? So the civil rights movement, instead of maybe trying to bring whites and blacks together to work together, cooperating, maybe now there's more conflict between the two groups. Or longer term impacts of the death of Martin Luther King. So there we have the video, ladies and gentlemen, King in the North. Shot in 1968, but our time period goes up to 1975. Therefore, what happened to civil rights from 1969 to 1975? Six more years. And that's coming in the next video. As ever, I hope it's been useful. See you soon. All the best.